but here yeah, I see this girl staring at me. I'm talking about you, right? <laughs> so, yeah, when you feel that you figured out these tiny humans, you figured how, you figured out how they work, you figured out the routine that is good for them. Trust me, give yourself two weeks of using that method. Your child is going to change. Yes. That. Let me just show you guys this light I bought from Alexpress. Stop! Stop! Did you remove that chip from your mouth? So, guys, this is the light. So, let's just try it up and see how bright it is. I hope it's bright so I can use the same thing. Okay, I think it's okay. It's not maybe it's because I'm not charged it, but yeah, I think it's okay. I was supposed to go make my hair, and I was supposed to go make my hair, and Elsa's dad is not home, and we have a shoot tomorrow morning, so I'm making it myself. I can't take Elsa to the salon because. First of all, Elsa has been crying to you. She has to be. Mm. Mm. So, it's a good thing that what we want to talk about actually has to do with, <laughs> with babies. So, these are five things. No, these are seven things I've learned since having a baby. So, if you're a new mom, um, most especially a first time mom if you're pregnant or if you're just a mom that have something to talk about also please continue watching so i can drop your your own <laughs> anyway as a first time mom it's my first time see you can never know something until you get to a, to a certain stage in your life what i mean is you can't know what what it feels like to have a child until you actually had a child i thought maybe i knew everything or most things <laughs> but maybe i didn't so see and this protective hairstyle i did it myself so don't laugh at it else i was on my back when i did it yeah let's just get right into this video I wanted to do the bald cap method, but because I'll be taking this wig after the shoot off, there's no need for that bald cap method. So it will make the installation a bit faster and easier. So let's just get right into the video while I install my hair. I'm installing it now because I want it to hold perfectly and also because the shoot is normal. The first thing is, people will always have an opinion, so do you. Yeah, this one eh, is one of the first things that I noticed. People will always have an opinion, so just do you. When you become a mom, you I don't know how God did it, but you have this instinct to know what is good for you and your baby. Before giving birth, you might think, I don't know what is good for me, I don't know what's good for my baby and stuff. After giving birth, people will have their opinion. People will have opinion on how you should breastfeed. People will have an opinion of if you should breastfeed or if you shouldn't. If your milk is not coming out, they will have an opinion of saying you shouldn't give the baby food, you should wait, or maybe you should just give the water the baby water to your breast milk start coming out. That's rubbish in my opinion but like i said see i'm giving you guys my opinion already <laughs> but like i said people always have their opinion so just do you whatever you feel is good for you whatever you feel is good for your baby just do it the first 
um, three weeks of my baby's life, I tried my best to not listen to people to do me because one they might even give you advice that they are not even following there's one girl that would give birth together she was telling me how exclusive breastfeeding was very very important and at that time my breast milk was not coming out i didn't start exclusively exclusively breastfeeding until after three weeks so my breast milk was just coming at that time just little by little so it was not enough to feed my baby so i was giving her none the girl was telling me how that is important and i found out that she was not exclusively breastfeeding she was giving her baby baby milk so i wonder why she tried to make me feel bad so i felt really bad i will not lie i felt really bad i felt inadequate I feel I cannot take care of my baby and god I really really wanted her to have just my breast milk so it really really affected me and I promised myself that I was not going to listen to any other person yeah sorry people will always tell you what you're doing wrong they will never tell you what you're doing right so i decided that no i would just do me people will talk but i will do me and i will not give them a space to even tell me anything number two it's easy to neglect your partner because of how hard motherhood is i don't know if this should come as number two but yeah it's very easy to neglect your partner because of how difficult motherhood is that's another thing i learned in jesus Yes, uh, I gave you your toy. Where's it? It's very easy to neglect your partner because of how difficult motherhood is. This one's already dropped. Okay, it's not dead yet. It's very easy to. This is the wig I'm installing. It's a frontal wig. It's very easy to neglect your partner because of how hard motherhood is. Motherhood is very very hard. I don't know for other persons, but yeah, for me, motherhood is very very hard. Now it's quite easy because now I can navigate. But the first few months it was really hard. It was not what I expected. See, guys, I I wanted to get pregnant, so you think I planned for it, right? Please hold on. So guys, you notice a change in the lightning and um, that's because that light I was using died. Yeah, who told me to use light I just bought the film. Let's get right to the video. So, I was saying that you think I planned for it. Yeah, I did, but what you plan is not what you get. You cannot plan for something that you've never done before. You can plan but I don't think motherhood is that thing because I feel it hits maybe not everyone but I think it hits everyone. So this has this is bright. Let's put the corn. I think it does hit everyone because for me I felt it really really hard. So it's very easy for you to neglect your partner and for me and my partner i actually did that i did neglect my partner and thank god i'm a very observant person i got to notice that even if he did not complain or anything like that i got to notice that he wasn't really good so i asked him what's up and then he opened up to me yeah so try and communicate with your partner it's very easy for you to neglect your partner most i think most most marriage issues usually come when the couple have kids and I know how difficult it is because I've been there. You are trying to cope. You are trying to become a new mom, and you're still a wife. And I know some people have husbands that are not 
you know, still not care, you know, like say, I like, no, I don't want to use the word I like Nigerian men because I, most Nigerian men I know are caring, so, yeah, they assist their wife, they assist their wives, so I don't know, let me not use that word. Anyway, Sha, it's very easy for you to neglect your partner, most especially if you have a very caring partner that will not complain. My husband is very, very caring, so I, I did feel bad when I realized that, yes, I was actually neglecting him. I don't want this blue hair because I don't want it to touch my hair. And the kind of hair packing I want to do, I don't really need the hair to be stuck. Yeah, don't know. You guys get the gist. So here I'll just use a um, blasting spray on it. This is just where I need. So I need the glue to dry when it's a bit white. I'll add the second layer and then we'll install. Let's go to the next point because guys, this video is everywhere. This video is all over the place. I just hope that I can edit it properly. Um the third point this one i i think my husband taught me this part because i was a victim of i was a victim of this ask for help when you need it it to save plenty issues like stop assuming stop assuming people or your partner should know when to assist you i had that like that mindset no when you should help me carry the baby, no when you should do this for me, no when you should do that. But if you don't ask for help, how would you know that you need help? Your partner might feel like because it's not like they'll stop providing or stop doing their own duty. You have another duty and it's not like they will not assist you, but you might need more assistance. There are times that you don't even want to do anything. Maybe you're going through postpartum depression postpartum anxiety like you need help so when you feel like you need help just ask for it it's better to get mad after they refused to help you than to get mad because you're assuming you're supposed to ask me if i need help why are you not asking me why didn't you ask like the um we we had an issue because of this and my husband was like, have you ever asked me to carry Elsa and I did not? And I was like, oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. No, I haven't. But I, to me, I felt like he should know. But he's not a sutia. He was doing his best. Then he usually carry her early in the morning because I love my morning sleep. So he usually carry her early in the morning. He carries her sometimes during the day. And... But I still felt like I I needed some help or some assistance, not just when I want to cook or I want to sweep, sorry, clean the house or like sometimes I just want you to carry her so I can just chill and relax and just like this self care something. <laughs> but yeah, I see this girl staring at me. I'm talking about you, right? <laughs> so yeah ask for help um this video is getting too long so let's just get to the next point the next point is focus on the positive rather than the negative this helped me a lot this period of your life you'll be stressed you're most especially the reason why i'm stating most especially as a first time mom you know when you're doing something for the second time you know what to expect like in reality but for the first time you just assume you don't really know what to expect and motherhood see giving birth to the child i found out that that's the easy part eh is the process the motherhood like you don't know how much of your time we give up you don't know i used to assume that when the baby is sleeping i can get time to do stuff but sometimes elsa will not sleep on her own for up to 10 minutes she's going to wake up if she's on my back she can stay there for up to an hour one hour 30 minutes two hours to still be sleeping so i used to think that before i got pregnant or before i give birth i used to think that okay 
when she's sleeping, I'll get to do stuff and she can sleep two hours. I get to do my personal thing. Hmm, it's not possible. And I have to be around even when she's sleeping on the bed because Elsa has this. I don't know. As soon as she wakes up, she stands up from the bed. So in order not to let her fall from the bed, I have to be in the room. So you guys can see. So just focus on the positive. Focus on spending time with your child. Focus on the happy moments. Focus on everything good that happens. The more you focus on things that are good that happen to you, the less frustrated you feel. So if you focus more on the positive, you you will take every other thing like a grain of salt or the negative stuff. But if you are focused on the bad things, see, you'll be depressed, you'll be stressed, you'll be unhappy, you will not enjoy this moment and it flies. I can't remember. I, I just give it to when did I give it to you, Elsa? When? When did I give it to you, Mama? It feels like yesterday I gave it to this girl, and you can see she's already trying to stand. Mm. Mm. It feels like yesterday. <gasps> it feels like yesterday, and she, she's already trying to stand. So, you want to try and enjoy that moment. See, the more, and I think I did not feel it that much because I tried to focus on the positive. If you focus on the negative, the time will be long. <laughs> You'll be counting. Mm. You'll be counting. See, I'm filming now. I'm filming. Respect. Respect me. Respect my YouTube channel. Respect us. Respect your auntie and your uncles. Your aunties and your uncles. Um, stop being in a hurry to get back to your old routines. Create a new one. This is very, very important. Sometimes we have this notion that we can just go back to our old life, go back to our old routines, go back to the things that we used to do. Just for me, I tried to give myself time. I gave myself at least a year for enough, like for me to be able to go out. Of course, I'm not going to leave her for anybody because we don't have any family in Lagos. But yeah, I'll be able to go out and she'll be able to walk on her two feet. It will be easier than just carrying her, carrying, carrying, carrying her. So, just give yourself time. Some things, sometimes what causes depression is because you cannot go back to your old routine or the things that you used to do. You can't go back to your work. For some persons that have this anxiety of leaving their child, they can't go back to work. They can't go back to um the things that they used to do maybe you want to work out but you feel too tired all of a sudden like give yourself time instead create a new kind of life for yourself a new routine if you love to work out create like an easier workout routine or try and work out at home maybe you used to go to the gym try and work out at home try and incorporate the baby in your everyday schedule and just change your routine basically change your routine don't go back don't stop dwelling in the past because when you dwell in the past you miss the past and then that will lead to depression that's one thing i've learned so create a new routine for yourself mm -hmm. try to do see now i'm filming with elsa this is something i usually will not do every time i'll be waiting for her to go to bed before i film but usually sometimes this girl can stay to 12 and I don't have time to film anymore. So I said, why not? I'll film even if she's there. If my husband is, is with us, fine. He will hold her. But if he's not, I will film. So just create a new routine. Um, The next one, you have to work hard not to be miserable. Stop expecting everyone else to do the work for you. This is very, very important. Um, let me just give an example of, of myself so that you can understand this point. Um, there was a time I did not understand I was going through postpartum rage. I did not understand what that, that feeling was. But I felt like my husband should make me feel good because I just betted a complete human for him. Like... And he was doing his best. He was 
assisting me as much as he could. So you notice the change in light. He just brought the light. So guys, hold on. Let me just turn the light back on. So yeah. Mm. So I wanted my husband to this is not your idea. I'm going to finish this video and I will not be able to install this here for you so that you guys can see. Anyway, I noticed that I wanted my husband to make me happy, per se. And that is not the kind of person that, or oh, that is not how, the, that is not the kind of people we are. My husband is a happy person. I'm a happy person. We come together to join our happiness. And yeah. And that's one thing that I've always worked. I don't need my husband to make me happy. He doesn't need me to make me happy. He doesn't need me for him to be happy. We just combine our happiness and we just share our happiness with each other. I don't know if that makes sense. Yeah. So I was basically just focusing on him trying to make me happy instead of focusing on okay this is my new life how am i supposed to cope what am i supposed to do to make it work for me just like the previous point that i said create a new routine and until i did that until i figured out what i needed personally to make me happy i was miserable for quite a while like about two weeks and two weeks guys is a lot for me because i'm someone that I don't know how to be sad for more than 24 hours. No. I don't know how to be sad for more than 24 hours. I don't do well with sadness. I'm allergic to sadness. <laughs> yeah. So, that's it for that point. So, just try to work on yourself. Try to find things, new things that make you happy. And stop expecting people to do work for you. It will help you and to help your partner or people that you're around. They don't, they cannot, they cannot bear, they, it's not easy to bear, like to ignore you all through pregnancy, your hormones or your bad character. <laughs> it's not bad character, but yeah, you get my point. It's not easy. They are humans also. One day they can just bust and you don't want that day to come. Um... Last but not the least, this is the seventh point. Your baby will always change when you get a hang of it. This is very, very important. This is like a very, very important point. When you think that you figured out this tiny thing, this tiny humans, when you feel sorry about, I was about calling it, so I'm very, very sorry. When you feel that you figured out this tiny humans, you figured how you figure out how they work. You figure out the routine that is good for them. Trust me. Give yourself two weeks of using that method. Your child is going to change. Yes. These babies change as fast as. And it's not easy to figure out a perfect routine that works for you. So maybe it takes you like... To my observation, I think they change every three, three months. And three months feels long, right? No, it's not long. Before you will figure out a routine that works for them, it might take like almost two months. And as soon as you get that routine and you're trying to enjoy yourself, the child has changed. Sometimes it doesn't even take up three months. Let's say two months, the child will change. So they will always change. They will always change. Obviously, this girl has been so clingy. When I mean so clingy, if I drop her now and just walk to that, she just start crying. If sometimes her dad will have to carry her forcefully. You don't want your mother to rest. What's your problem? That's when she should stop crying. If not, this girl, she feels um I'm her leg. Like she feels like she's part, like physically part of me. If I move, she will not be able to breathe. That's how she feels. Because she wants to be around me to for seven. And the first time that she became so clean, I will not lie to you guys, I was frustrated. I was frustrated because I was tired. I used to take her to the toilet. She'd be on my lap when I'm doing the number two. I, when I, even when I want to pee, this girl will still be with me. Like, 
there's bacteria now i'll wash my hand i'll have to wash her hand also it was not easy i'll have to sometimes i'll i'll beg i'll have to tell my husband just hold her even even though she's crying like there's there was a time i had to just try my best to get used to her crying because you can't be doing that every time sometimes you know it's not good to be with a child when you want to flush the toilet because of or, all the bacteria that come out of the toilet. So I would drop her, she'll be crying. I'll flush the toilet, then I'll come back and carry her. Like our routine. Before I got used to it, but now I'm so used to it. I'm so used to it that I don't see it as a problem. But for the first one to two weeks, it was really, really hard. So let me just give this bonus point. Because of the new changes, it might affect like your relationship, but try your best try your best for it not to affect it is okay to quite see when i first found i was pregnant i was very sick eh? before my me and my husband found the routine that worked for us we first of all quite quarreled like i think twice our quarrel is the past 24 hours yeah? we don't we have that rule we don't go to bed upset or we don't go to bed without talking to each other but yeah we quarrel twice like we carried to the settled for the next day before we now found the routine. That same thing after a move go, we quiet like I think three times. So we quiet and settle. The next day we quiet and settle. The next day we quiet and settle before we're like, no, what are we doing? So we discuss, okay, what is best for you? Okay, I like my morning sleep. Okay, I'll carry her in the mornings so that you can sleep and yeah, yeah, yeah. So you guys just have to come to an agreement for something that works for you. If your husband is too busy and you feel like you're overwhelmed, you guys should get a nanny. Like, just find out what works for you. Don't allow a baby to drift you guys apart. Don't like to affect your intimacy. These small creatures, it's only when you want to do something that they know that they'll be awake. So sometimes just your life, just know that your life will be all about quickie. Try to utilize your time. So that brings me to the end of this video. See, I did not finish my hair. And this is right. So let me just put like the second layer. This place is still white. I need this place to be transparent before I put the second layer and then install my hair. And that's it for this video. I'll see you guys in my next one. Yes, I took off my mic. That's it for this video, guys. I'll see you guys in my next one. Thank you guys for watching. Bye.